Um, yes. And I'm going to share my screen very quickly, uh, just to do the what I do every. Can you see my screen? Just me. Yeah. Uh, yes, we can yeah. see your This screen. is the thing uh, I do every every time we start a meeting. Uh, we are Iterate UX. We have a Discord channel here. Jasmine, I think you can add the link in the chat. Um, we uh, have some design conversations there if you need some help. Even if your portfolio is not reviewed here, you can ask for help there. There's always people uh, reviewing work. And we meet every Wednesday at 7.30 Pacific time. Uh, we have different kind of meetings. Um, we have weekly meetings where we have portfolio reviews. We have some designers, speakers. We have design challenges from time to time. We are organizing the next one. It will be up soon. If you are working in your portfolio of you, or if you want to have a portfolio piece, this design challenge is a very good idea to start with. Uh, we have some resume review. We had the last week, uh, this portfolio review. Um, uh, yeah, so the idea is to give you a space where you can do some more practical things about UX. It's, this group is special for people, for students and people transitioning into UX. So feel free to, to reach out if, if you was, have some ideas of another kind of meetings, just let us know and we can organize something. Um, yeah, and this was for the last week. So next week we have, next Wednesday at 7.30 Pacific time, we have a meeting for networking. So we will, we invited Ali, that is a member, community member. She's a very successful uh, person. She had a, she has a podcast uh, on Spotify, very successful. Uh, she's very good at connecting with people and she will share with you uh, some of the tips uh, that help her to get a job. Uh, and the week after that, we will have a presentation, a very important presentation, where Jorge is going to be there, actually. And they are going to present uh, the rebranding the, of their company. Uh, it was a huge job. Uh, and I think it's very interesting for all of us uh, because we will uh, see what what is the work in, like a, in a big company, a big design work, a very serious work in terms of design. So if you want to learn what you are going to be doing we hope in the future in your work, uh, please be here in two weeks more, okay? So we will start uh, with this session. I'm going to stop sharing and I want everyone to meet Jorge. Uh, Jorge is our um, reviewer today. Uh, Jorge, maybe you can introduce yourself because I, I can't do justice to all your trajectories. It's quite impressive actually. Let's do it. So, well, thanks so much for inviting me today. I just want to make clear that I'm uh, nobody, like whatever I'm going to say are advices based in passion and things that I will apply to my own uh, career. But uh, for sure, this is not a science and this is about like getting the right person in the right company in the right timing to be hired. And whatever I'm going to say could be like, uh, super useful for some people and for for some others not that's just to start to to break the ice uh, well my name is jorge i'm not from here as you can tell because of my terrible accent i'm from spain i've been here five years in in vancouver and i think i represent transition because we we talk about transition a lot right like probably like anybody else like transition between countries transition between technologies like when I started uh, printing and branding was the Holy Bible, just to be clear, like around 12 to 15 years ago, there was no much more options than motion designer, motion design, sorry, and, and stuff like that. Uh, there was like web design, but it was through Dreamweaver and like it, the, the weight of the developers was like way higher than any UI if that would exist at the time a designer so my career has been like adapting myself but there is something very particular on me i think it's like i always keep fundamentals and what i like it like i've been trying to make whole or complete transitions to ux or to the different worlds it was a trend at the time but i never got it so i there is like some stuff that i love about design that i try to keep sell and apply it in every single uh, place I'm working in or for every single client I've been working in. So just as I said, like I'm a, a brand editorial traditional designer. 
that tries to offer the best value when we talk about new tech or new technologies. I'm working in Taitawa Limpad. I started as a visual designer and transitioned into senior brand manager. That means nothing but uh, exploring how brand decision can affect to the product. That's the cool part. That's why I'm probably here and why I have a little of authority to talk about UX without being a UX designer. So I'm gonna try to, to give you guys this kind of, of, of advices. I'm not gonna insist lost into visual. I understand that uh, the paradigm change uh, probably forever. Uh, I know that probably you guys or based on what I saw in your portfolios are not interested in to, into be super visual uh, at all. But I'm gonna try to talk about the storytelling and narrative and those things that I, I think that you can use in absolutely every single place of the world. Because, and this is the last thing I say, something we have the designers, like uh, uh, the huge benefit that we have is like no matter uh, where we are and where we go, we don't depend on companies uh, or big companies behind us but our work in, in our portfolio. And this is the best tool ever. Like just a few uh, professions can say the same. And that's it. Great. That, that's saying that anyway, I mean, I know like as a UX designers, we sometimes uh, kind of overlook the importance of visual in our portfolio. But the reality is like when other designers are looking at our portfolios, it, it has to look visually pleasant too. And it's something, a mistake I made maybe at, at the beginning. I, I was not very worried about that. But then I re realized like, that's the market too. So uh, a good, uh, good tips about visual design are, are always welcome too. Right. Um, Jorge, so you can maybe share your screen and we can go with this first uh, person that is Tainu, I think. We will start with Tainu. Okay. Yeah, so I will paste her portfolio here so you can you can check it in your computer too. Uh, yeah, Monse is saying, yeah, visual design tips will be great because sometimes we need that. Um, okay, so there are going to be 10 minutes of review and then five minutes where Tainu, you can ask some questions. Uh, Tainu, you can admit yourself in case you want to, uh, you want to, ask something or in case Jorge want to ask you something. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, let's start. Cool. So first of all, this is the project that you want to be, you want me to review, right? Am yes. This is, yeah. Okay. So, well, can you tell me your ideal work or title or position in your ideal company just to set the tone of the conversation? It doesn't matter if it's not realistic. Yeah. Uh, so, I was a UX designer for this project and we basically, we were analyzing how COVID impacted uh, the dating landscape uh, last year. And uh, which is why we decided to create this product so that uh, we realized that people were able to find dates. That was not difficult. They had Tinder, they had a match. They had all of these dating services to find dates. But what they were struggling with was maintaining the relationship that they had because they did not know where to go to plan or go for dates or they did not know how to do activities indoors. So we were trying to create some sort of space where they could uh, interact and grow their relationship while also staying safe during the COVID-19 pandemic. So this was a project based on that. So we created like a dating platform. I would say a dating platform more like a service for uh, uh, couples who are probably in relationships or just started a new relationship to find date kits or places that are COVID safe for them to go out on dates and a space for them to um, have private and secure conversations because we realized that people who are in relationships faced issues about um, uh, using other uh, messaging platforms like platforms where they talk about groceries to uh, have romantic conversation which was something they didn't want to do and they wanted like a space which was safe and where people couldn't take screenshots and things like that so that's how we created this product okay Cool. So in terms of how you are like presenting this project along the, the whole side, okay, there is something, for example, that I, that I saw is like you are, uh, 
using part of the best uh, work, meaning the most visual or the most UI right at the beginning or like uh, I'm building, I would say like uh, the, the, the best parts uh, right at the beginning, like these kind of things, I understand that you have to put a first prototype here, something that really outstands. But for example, like uh, the part of the interactive design or the high definition uh, prototypes or something like that probably should be at the very end or in the middle, like keep some expectations, keep some surprise, okay? Then, uh, for example, another thing that uh, I see in many UX uh, case of study and stuff is the user personas and user journey, for example. I always consider that they are too extensive in, in, in general, like I will summarize it like you have two that I think that's perfect. Like some other people describe absolutely every single persona or five or, or, or six. Uh, they should be antagonists, like even if you have to not fake their reality, but like it's all about uh, looking for uh, uh, things to compare. So like one should be one uh, case and the other one should be like the opposite. For example, if you're going to keep two, uh, meaning like for sure there is a guy, there is a girl, but like two things that makes a big difference between the different personas. Okay, uh, the side map is uh, good, I would say. Understanding our competition personally, for example, uh, even when pretty much nowadays uh, knows about different apps, I will present or compare whatever your app is different with the other ones, since you're gonna present the competitors. You never know, you know. For sure, you're, you are not gonna make a, like a huge analysis of, of absolutely every, uh, competition app, but at least taking one and saying like, what's yours doing uh, different in this case? Uh, let's go to some other stuff that call my attention. Like try not to repeat the same uh, image all the time. You have to like find some interest in, in what you are uh, telling. I see that maybe the chat or these kind of notifications are the, the most important of what you are, of your proposal. So I will isolate them, for example, like I will create like a page for the chat or I will take some of the message or the profile photos or the notifications and I will like take it completely into the surface and, and make it even more special, not something that it fits out uh, around. Uh, the same with something here, for example, this kind of, um, like I would try to do something interactive or like a small animation or whatever that compiles everything in once in case of, for example, this is pretty cool in my opinion, you are describing different steps or I don't know if it's onboarding. Yeah, like it's kind of onboarding situation. So it would be nice to see everything in, in, in only one, like something that is changing. For sure, like, as I said, like it can be like a super simple animation. It can be like a frame by frame stuff. You don't even need to have a motion there, but it will be cool. It's uh, like a big part of the project and it's definitely different to what we were seeing before. Okay, and here is what I was saying, like high fidelity mockups or mocks. Uh, all that we can see here, in my opinion, and that will be the core uh, advice that I can give you, shouldn't be repeated, repeated in absolutely any other place up here, you know? It's like you are showing me the final trick. You don't need to put it necessarily like at the very end, okay? You can use that as a strategy. You can put it in the middle of the, of the description or the case of a study, but I need to like understand the difference with what it was like a preliminary mockups to what is the star, the main character, the most beautiful part, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you put it at the very end of the, of the case of a study, you will keep my, my, my interest. And about the very last part, like, and this is a generic advice for everybody, like 
or go big or go home, as some people say. Uh, if you're gonna say like final takeaways or something, don't make it or hide it here. Uh, like make it a little bit more important. Like describe three three bullets or three points of what you're gonna do. Intentions, vision, even a little small prototype that is talking about you. You're gonna do iterating in this kind of apps is super important. Sometimes you or apps or projects. Sometimes you are describing a project that is completely ongoing or, or the, that you couldn't uh, publish because your company doesn't allow you to do that. And, and, and you just have like, a, like the first mockups or whatever. So it's really important to talk about your vision about what you're gonna do. And this is what you really gonna offer your, your vision of the things. Because if you are working for a huge company, like let's say it's an hypothetical scenario like Google or, or Dropbox or something like that. Uh, you were part of lots of decisions taken by uh, data that you were not even probably participating actively in the decision. It was more like the results of that data telling you. So it's really important to, to say like, okay, if I give you the money and resources and nothing, it's an impediment, nothing is a problem for you to develop this app how would you do it, you know? So I will explore more of that part. But if I have to summarize, like a little bit more uh, visual, if you can compile four slides into a single one to make it smaller and create more interest. And you can keep the narrative in that way that I really want to keep reading, keep reading, keep reading, since all these case of studies are always really long, better. That makes sense. Thank you so much. Uh, could I also have like a suggestion regarding my homepage? Because I was worried if like people come to my homepage and they don't understand what the projects are about. Like, what do you think about my homepage as well? Okay, uh, that's what I saw the first, but since uh, they told me that you wanted this project. Uh, this is as a visual or brand or traditional designer. I'm crazy about thumbnails. Like to me, how you present the first page, like it's super important. Like I, even if you don't have the craziest projects inside, you're gonna keep my attention. When I say mine is like the attention of any interviewer or any person that wants to, to seek out your work, right? So like, I think that making a metaphor with the real world, this is a really narrow or a really tight window to see the things like it's better to work in squares or it's better to work in a, like a more day by day proportion that you use like a TV or something like that. Uh, you are like eliminating lots of information by, by doing it like that. As easy, if you want to give this a structure as to extend this square and make a big window and then you have four projects, but only four windows. Uh, that would be more than perfect. And avoiding cliches is an advice that I will give to anybody too. Like we all know that mockups are like that. Uh, we all know that a startups looks like that. If you can put something a little bit more interesting, even if it's not fully related what it's inside, uh, the better, you know? Like posties, uh, great mockups, these kind of things. We all know when, when we are in one of these uh, portfolios where we are. So don't give the information that we already know or the, the kind of environment that we already know perfectly. Give me something a little bit more interesting. Maybe this will be a good example. For example, like I wanna correct what I said, you are showing something that is related but not related with, with UX. So maybe that will make me uh, get in or this, I will probably do it a little bit different, but I get that a uh, glass of wine is uh, uh, driving me into a dating something supported by this kind of, of mock-up. So yeah, that would be my advice, like more natural thumbnails and the number of projects at this point, I think is perfect. I always mm -hmm. recommend to select the best of the best. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, one of my like greatest worry is that uh, I don't want to come out as just a web or UI designer. Like when people enter my 
for portfolio they like from through first glance i want them to know that i'm a ux designer uh, does that reflect through my portfolio like say it again that you what kind of what kind of uh, say it again uh like my greatest worry is that people who look at my portfolio would assume that i'm a web designer or a ui designer but i really want to show that i'm a, actually a ux designer so i just wanted to know if my portfolio conveys the message that i am a ux designer i think i at least i wouldn't say the opposite i mean i wouldn't say that you are a brand uh, like a brand designer or something like that uh, you have lots of like a uh, flags that are telling me that I'm in front of someone who is doing architecture or UX or, or something like that. And, but again, like if, if you, for example, this is one of the biggest problems that we all have and probably you guys too, like, it's like, I wanna be a UX designer, but I have a visual part and I don't wanna uh, leave behind me like some potential clients that could ask me for a logo one day or something like that. I want to show absolutely everything But if you are brave enough and like to decide what you want to do and you have the things clear, like make it look like super techie, super UX uh, portfolio and you will success because that's going to be way easier for you to defend it in any interview or any like uh, event like today. You're going to have like just a little things, but things that you believe in instead of no, but I do this and tomorrow I will do this other. Uh, it's something personally that takes me a lot of suffer but if you have it clear go for it go for ux and it is absolutely everything else that would be my advice honestly thank you so much thanks you great timing 15 minutes sharp <laughs> uh, I would like to ask um, Jorge do you recommend because her concern is uh, she wants to look as a UX designer will you recommend to add something on top like that little you know little paragraph two lines saying I'm a UX designer with this in with I know interested in research and and I don't know user testing and I have a background in graphic design for example Would you recommend to start the portfolio with that or is it too cliche? I, I don't think it's a cliche. I would say yes, because like you have to belong to the market you are trying to, you, I mean, you have to work uh, around the market you are trying to belong to. And the paradigm might change a lot, as we were mentioning, like some por you user experience portfolio are being nowadays a, like a newspaper. I mean, they are full of articles, just like wording information. So if you think that you can add some value or, or you participated on a project like it was data driven or you have been doing something super specific inside UX design, yeah, I would like a, a brief description that, that summarizes. It always helps. A, probably a UX manager of whatever would tell you 100% yes. Since myself, I work more with image and the impact that a, a group of picture gives me, I would say like uh, work better in, in the thumbnails and in the, in the projects. But I think uh, it's a really good advice as, as Liz says. Okay, thank you, Jorge. Thank, thank you. you thank you, Taino, for send your, sending your portfolio. Uh, the next person will be, where is my list? Uh, Beatrice, maybe? Beatrice? Yeah, sure. Yes. Hi. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Hi, good, thanks. Um, yeah, so uh, this is my website. <laughs> um, and I guess to answer your first question from the previous person, I guess the roles I'm looking for is more product design roles. Um, I, I feel like I have strength in terms of the research side as well as um, some visuals. So, and it would be my first role Um, in applying to generalist roles. So yeah, um, that's kind of the target that I'm aiming for. Um, so I guess UX designer slash product designer. Um, and then in terms of ideal company, um, hopefully like a SaaS startup or um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I have 
haven't really thought of certain industries. Like I'm very open to a lot of other industries. Um, yeah. Yeah. Are there any questions? No worries. Yeah, it's like yeah. A, like a, an hypothetical question, right? Like if I ask you, like if you have all the money, which car would you buy? Just <laughs> yeah. to, you know, it's kind of a like a psychological question or something like that. But it, it doesn't matter. So cool. Uh, first of all, like this, the, you want to like a general review of the portfolio oh, and yeah. start in, in a general uh, way. Something sure. that I think is important, it's consistency. And for example, like I saw like a different, uh, how can I say, like level of effort in, in the previous, in the, in the first projects, meaning these ones than in the last one. Like I think it's good to have some consistency even, it's really cool to see how, how a designer has been developing his progress and that kind of stuff. But I think that it's important not to have like something that is super uh, crazy elaborated or work like the first one. Sorry for using this kind of adjectives. It's just to like be a little bit of like a stream to, to make it clear. And, and these ones that maybe like are a little bit more weak or something like that. Advice to face this kind of problem, for example, something I do or I try to put in practice is a... Uh, like I don't want everybody, I mean the, the new the newcomers to my work to to pay lots of attention to what I did previously. So I start like making them a little bit smaller and, and providing a little bit less of information. That way I make clear that if you go to my last one or my latest stuff, mm -hmm. it's exactly what I want you you to see. Okay. It's just an advice like uh, some other people would say like, uh, yeah, progress is progress. And you saw, uh, I mean, uh, you, you were presenting uh, this part of, of an old project that way. And now you know way more about it and you are presenting it this other way. But uh, about how to wrap it up, that would be my first advice. For the rest of the staff, uh, I really like it all, honestly. Like, I think, for example, let's go to this spread. It's super complete. I can even jump to the prototypes of Figma, where it was uh, really fun. If I will be looking for more and more and more information, and this is super typical in UX uh, process, uh, I will be super happy to see it all about it, even play with it, understand the stuff. Uh, it will be a really good tool for an interview, for example, because I will make you uh, walk me through or I will use the app in front of you to challenge you and, and stuff like that. Uh, for example, about the ecosystem of the uh, project by itself, these kind of icons, I will use the same icons that you are using here. They are very mm -hmm. close but it takes you the same effort to use the same ones, right? Mm -hmm. So these kind of details that it takes you five minutes are, are the best. In a portfolio like you, every project needs to breathe exactly like what you are proposing to, to me at the very beginning, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna use like characters or something or illustrations should be the same. If you're gonna use like charcoal structures or even if you're gonna use these kind of bars, that will be a good way to to describe other other stuff like static numbers data, I don't know. Be smart in that way and and make it make me feel like inside, uh, really inside a project. Uh, since you have some uh, skills, or that's what I understand in by doing this web, or I don't know. Did, did you like code it by yourself? You, you were using a platform or Oh, um, for, for my website? For the, the whole site. Oh, yes, I, I used Webflow. Okay, so Webflow allows you, I'm sure, since you have a big amount of text, mm -hmm. like make uh, drop down menus or something like that, mm -hmm. it will be super fun to see like research, hypothesis, assumption, interview, and then I decide where do I go because this project is really, really, really long. Okay, these kind of things are super, um, 
like nice to see when you are reviewing lots and lots of portfolio, you are giving me some power of, of, of go to the information that I really want to see. Uh, again, this kind of boards, for example, I will summarize it. Like I will take uh, four or five of, of the decisions. I will make a really clear comparison. Like I don't think uh, we need absolutely all of them or I'm going to read all of them. Like again, uh, so everybody, those parts that makes your work or your career unique, we all know about these uh, walls in every company full of uh, <clears throat> these kind of notes and stuff. So this space could be used for something maybe uh, more appealing. I'm not saying this is wrong at all, okay? But like reading in diagonal, that is right. an, a strategy that we all uh, use when we want to review many stuff in a short amount of time, uh, that will be super important. If I get here, I will think like, okay, another wall of posits, next stuff. We have four minutes left. Cool. Uh, personas again, like I, I, for example, like this uh, template or this model, you are talking about one, but you are explaining me lots about the stuff. I didn't stop in to see if this, uh, graphics are legit or not, but uh, it makes it more digestive, you know? It's like, okay, if and if I want, I can see like easy uh, information to understand in a more visual way. Uh, the workflow again. Uh, prototyping again, it's uh, good. I will, one more time, for example, like reading in diagonal, when I see this kind of graphics and I see here and here and here and here, I could tend to think that everything is the same. Maybe you can use only one since you are in wireframing. Okay, I know it's important, but like you can jump some of the steps in my opinion to insist in, in which part of the prototyping are more important. Mm -hmm. Let's go. This kind of comparisons, in my opinion, are good. Like it could be on in a single slide, but uh, it reminds me to like uh, research on the market and things like that. Like some uh, knowledge behind it. And it's really cool that I can I can jump into this. Actually, even you did it or you didn't do it. It would be really nice if you will link me mine to the work of other team of your company mm. that did that as an understanding that that was a huge stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. These kind of gestures are really nice. And as I was saying previously, like it's good that I see some difference when, when we jump into prototyping and the final design. Like it makes me feel like I'm kind of in the great finale. And this is the best in terms of, of narrative. Okay. Design impact really good. The next steps really good. And future considerations. Uh, I will probably make it a little bit bigger or a little bit more usual. But yeah, summarizing like a good narrative. Uh, good design, I mean, it's really visual and nice to see. Sorry, I'm stopping a single project is the most important in my opinion. So, so it, it simplifies lots of stuff. And what is I want to say? Ah, and really interesting that, that option of jumping into the, into the prototypes and understanding more uh, on the app it was created for. Great. Thank you so much. Um, I guess I'm worried about the length. <laughs> um, like, I know you mentioned a lot of parts where I can better summarize it. Um, in terms of anything that I'm missing, would there be anything I'm missing? Or what do you think I could kind of leave out a bit more? Uh, to give you something uh, different and don't take it if you think I'm wrong, honestly, I would say that it's too long. Mm -hmm. That's what. That's the only thing I would say. You know, like uh, maybe it would be better if you take me out constantly to to this uh, project to parts that it will be interesting to me, and you give me a main page like a little bit more 
I mean, or softer or lighter in terms of, of content. But again, it's my perspective, you know, someone that is looking for pure architecture or UX architecture mm -hmm. and lots of knowledge behind will read it from point A to point B and wouldn't complain at all about mm -hmm. what he has, what he or she has in front. In my case, I would like, like more power to go out since you are proposing this kind of portfolio, right? It's not necessarily like, like to make lots of external links, but I would like to like more summarizing here mm -hmm. and jumping into the parts that it could be interesting. But I don't think that uh, giving too much information, it's in UX uh, problem. It will be in, in, in a more visual portfolio because it will be exhausting. Did I answer? Kind yes, of? yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I hope I didn't go over time. <laughs> oh, it's good. We have three minutes more. Uh, Jorge, okay. I want to ask you a question. Yeah. So if you, if you are reviewing a portfolio, I know you review more portfolio maybe for more visual designers, no UX designers, mm -hmm. but how much time do you spend reviewing one portfolio? How much time do you have? Uh, <clears throat> well, mm, Be honest. You don't, if you don't see, if you don't see something uh, interesting or, or that you could apply to your day by day, because like all you guys keep in mind, probably some of you have interviewed with people, some others not, like uh, it is not true that you are looking for generic stuff or someone that is really good or bad or whatever. You are looking for solving a problem that you have in that moment. When you are hiring, you are on a rush always. You are trying to solve a sub, a problem, a person that you don't have. So you are constantly looking for something that really like, you know, solve, it's like it's solving the problem that you have in a visual or descriptive way. So if you feel the emotion or that punch like, oh, I want to check more, you go for two minutes and maybe like you take it constantly the rest of the week. Like I hope that person answers to the interview or something like that. If you see perfectly that it's completely out of tone, it's about uh, seconds. Like I think you prefer to jump into another into another thing. I'm not saying good or wrong. If you see, I'm saying like it answers to my problems or not. Right. Mm, great to know. So only seconds to to get your attention and see at least considering to to check the the rest of the portfolio. Yeah. If they are yours, if you are helping to the other team, for example, if they are helping me with brand designers or I'm helping to a profile in between a UX, brand design or something, and I'm taking portfolios for them even less because all I'm taking is like, is like a red flags that, that they didn't see, right? So this is the process. This is why it's not a science and it's really complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good to know. <laughs> Thank you, Beatrice, for sending your yeah. portfolio. I hope mm -hmm. that was helpful. Thanks so it, much. Help, helpful, not hopeful. Uh, yeah, so let's go to the final one. Is Monse Mon. So this is a um, PDF portfolio. That's interesting. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so why, why a PDF portfolio, Monse? I, I want to know. Yeah, no, excellent question. So. Um, I had a limited amount of time to put my portfolio together. And last time when I tried using a web, um, how you say one of the services like Squarespace, I, I focused more on the layout given by the templates than the content. So in this case, I wanted to do content first and make sure that the study cases were <laughs> communicating the content well. And then when I have more time, I'll transfer the content into a, a um, how you say that? A web portal for you. So I actually started with a Figma prototype because it can it can act as a website, but it um it took too too long to load, and sometimes it wouldn't load fast enough for people, and it's not browser compatible between browsers. So that's why I went with um like a document in Google Drive. Um, Great idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah right, I I forget. I have to give a little context on this uh, study case, I suppose. Please. Yeah. <laughs> So I guess like some context around this is, this is a project I did in my company. The company I work for is Swift Medical and they kind of focus on providing better wound care for, um, to empower clinicians to provide better wound care. Um, however, the project I worked on 
was dedicated to improve the uh, workflows for our internal customer success team. And so what happens is that every day they have a lot of things going on. They're trying to create uh, positive relationships with our customers. However, they use like these tools that are just like so painful to use. It takes them a lot of time. And, you know, um, it causes a lot of errors that take a lot of time as well. So my project was to redesign one of the tools they use to um, make their workflows a bit more efficient, but also have like happier customer success uh, specialists. And um, yeah, so that's kind of like the context around this study case. Okay, thank you. So first thing I thought when I when I saw this is like it was a, like a, as you describe it like a huge amount of work. Okay, like lots of decisions behind some of them probably we won't even know, even if we look at, at this, I can see like some of these, like lots of discussions and, and, and stuff like that, that makes me feel like this kind of project is in the wrong uh, format, like no PDF, not a website. I see it and I don't know if conscious or an unconscious way uh, you have been trying to do that, but I see this like way more like an article where you can like focus into a, what is different in every single thing, every single step, what are you offering different? Like you can make some uh, research about, or you could like uh, feature some other examples of the industry or something like that. The final thing, like the little change you've made after all these efforts are that is small, that everything, else is more interested than the final uh, uh, product or the final redesign. You know what I mean? I'm not, okay, I might poke you on this. So I'm trying sure. to understand um, like what you're describing. So you, um, you're kind of describing like the format I took is like, is similar to like the format that articles allow. So like I can go more into detail of explaining, I don't know, different decisions, but it seems that if I, I'm not sure I understood correctly. So like, it seems that the most interesting pieces are, as you read, uh, you as a reader, the most interesting pieces to you are the content and text rather than the visuals or the opposite. I'm just not too sure I got that. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. The first part, the, as, as you describe it, like I think it's way more interesting what are you describing here. It's very detailed than uh, the visual. The visuals are uh, not as spectacular as other kind of projects. I'm not saying it's your fault or something like that. I mean, you can tell that the solution you had to come up or the product is like kind of a simple or it's simple in, in, from a visual perspective, point of view. So, and I think the power of all this is in these guys here where you are describing stuff, all the wording, you know, it's not like I cannot stop to, to, to consider what you are presenting here as a visual. I'm just saying that I think the the work will outstand more if uh, it will be more focused into an article mode or something like that, you know, like. Uh, but it's not something about what you did or that you didn't like do it visual enough. I think that the product by itself is not as visual as other kind of product. It's something that is not. Uh, that is probably playing against you instead of uh, making you a, a benefit. So, I mean, uh, as it is, it's uh, really good. I don't know if there is, for example, this kind of illustrations belongs to the product or is something you did to support the body text, like this guy. Oh, um, yeah, those images don't belong to the product itself. I use them hoping in the hopes that it would can like bring more visuals and a better experience for the reader just to give a bit more of a joyful mm -hmm. um, vibe <laughs> to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know if you will be like in a articles platform or Notion or GitHub or Medium or something like that, where everybody understands that they are in front of, I mean, they're gonna, they're gonna face themselves like a big amount of text or a big amount of knowledge. The, the, the approach is different to when you are visiting a portfolio, you know? 
you wouldn't have probably to include some things that are a little bit like uh, not related with the product like this. For sure, the, the, the approach is good. Like you are trying to enrich the content with some of the illustrations. But if those illustrations doesn't belong to the final product, like why to keep them? If you will be on an article or like more knowledge-based platform, you wouldn't need to struggle with these kind of things and you could focus in more descriptions and like kind of stuff. I don't think there is nothing, uh, but it's simply that uh, the, the, the visual parts are not as visual as to, uh, or as important in my opinion, as the content here, you know? Mm -hmm. If we will go to some other of your projects, maybe we will find uh, something different. I will, can, I, can I go to other projects? Uh, sure. <laughs> okay. <Thank you. laughs> Just like, for example, this kind of uh, project by itself, you know, it allows you to do more stuff from the very beginning. You have a logo, you have a watermark, you know, you have a, a cute wireframe here. Like, all these kind of things, the visual parts are way more interesting. The solutions are more UI, you know? Mm -hmm. When in the other one I perceive or I have the feeling that the solutions are way, are way more like knowledge based, like decisions behind, you know? Mm -hmm. This kind of long discussions that drives you to change a little super small thing that not many people are gonna realize, but it's gonna affect in a good way to lots of users, you know? And this kind of uh, project is, what I think it deserves to be more on, on a platform that people is like inclined to read more than to, to go for a walk through images. Did I explain myself a little bit better this time? Even if I didn't convince you, I'm not trying to. Okay, um, yes, yeah, so I'm just um, kind of thinking about what you said. Um, so the idea is like, well, what I'm getting is um, the impressions that the portfolio kind of like evokes is that the difference between this case study, which is um, what you're, you have open right now, and the other more um, UI wise, is that you get the impression that this study case um, had more of a stronger, or not stronger, like many more design decisions to make, and there was like a more effort put into making those decisions works, making those decisions work in a way that it kind of helps many users as opposed to the other study case where you're getting more the vibe of like, this is a UI that, you know, you want to make appealing in a way. Is that is that what I'm getting? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what I get when I when I see it. For example, can I put you an example? In my end that you have time enough to like uh, take this out from, from Drive or from PDF format. I know that is super complicated. We are all super busy. Let's let's say that you put everything uh, that we have here on a portfolio, on a web portfolio, you know? Mm -hmm. Like it would be really cool uh, if uh, this spread, for example, would be like, uh, just to make enough variations, like it would be an article inside uh, two more visual projects, you know? It would be super cool to see like how you can dance between more visual decisions, but you can stand a long process of, of pure UX or, or product-based decisions and like kind of stuff, you know what I mean? I'm not saying that it's bad or good or better or worse. I'm just saying that uh, it's not the format for this kind of uh, heavy text uh, case of studies or, or articles in this case. Mm, I have a question for you. Please. So with that in mind, um... I'm curious if having this very kind of like these different, how you say, types of study cases, one where it's more UI focused. Well, it seems that it's more, it, it gets, it makes the impression that it's more UI focused versus is that it's more like process focused. Um, you as a reader, does it conflict for you? Does it like raise any flags or does it, um, I don't know, how does it present to yourself? So if you're like uh, hiring for a UX designer um, by having something that's more like text heavy versus like something that's more UI heavy, like how does that talk to you? Like, again, I'm not like a UX uh, <laughs> item, a person, but when I saw the pro this, this process, like uh, as everything in this world, like food or something like that, 
if there is like a good visual approach, even if it's simple, but it's a good visual approach, uh, it's gonna get them attention better. Mm -hmm. And then they're gonna be more inclined to read as much as, as you want them to read, you know? Mm -hmm. Unless uh, they are looking for someone super, super, super like UX oriented, a UX architecture or even like a content strategy behind an app or something like that, a, they're going to struggle a little bit of, of reading something that is not like a spread with a, different images or pictures. A, that's what I would say. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you have I to could... pass some. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I just have another question for you. I'm not sure how much we're with time, but. We have three minutes more. Okay. Um, sorry, I cut you off. I'll let you finish your sentence and then I'll jump with my qu other question. Yeah. No, no, no. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, so, like, what would be some low hanging fruits in this portfolio that would help the readers know what to expect from the study cases? What it will help? Mm -hmm. Would you keep this format? Would you be open to change it? Um, I would be open to change it so that it's easier to absorb. So it's easier to leverage the skill so that they're easier to read in a shorter amount of time. OK. So for this one in particular, if you want me to be honest, like I will start with a title, like a punchline or a sentence. I wouldn't even put probably a picture or I will put a picture supporting that text, but I, text, but I will say in a sentence of, of three lines, uh, the problem that you have solved, you know, something that kind of like a pitch when you are making like a press note, something that really uh, calls my attention. And then I'm gonna go there, uh, super inclined to, read and accept and embrace as much text as you are uh, giving to me. If you place this kind of photo, for example, at the very beginning, you know, mm. uh, if I understand or I made this kind of uh, charts or, or, or heavy products before, I'm gonna go in. If not, I'm gonna jump into something more like that. You can call me simple or like, uh, you know, in a good way or something like that. But like, I will be more attracted to something like that in which I'm gonna see some like UI or design versus uh, this kind of, of product. So honestly, if you will enter with a title, like something super catchy and, and you put me in a place in which I know that I'm gonna like read a, a real solution for a real problem from a real company, uh, it will be way easier to, to accept mm -hmm. what I'm gonna just do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe give like context sooner and it's like less, like more simple, short context and make it catchy. <laughs> yeah, you don't have it easy, honestly. Like uh, I feel a little bit like, uh, struggling to give you advices because if I will, if you will give me, imagine that you give me the material separated, okay? I'm not the person who made the project, but you tell me like a sum of the pieces mm -hmm. and this is the main one, for example, or the first one I see, I will be like, mm, I'm going to have, I'm going to have friends to describe this. So it's, mm, I don't consider your fault at all. It's like uh, the material that you are starting uh, from, you know? The same that if mine that I have to make a case of a study of a brand that he that it was made by another person and it was super simple and it's not, I don't know, like something super heavy or a little bit outdated or something like that. I'm just taking it to a different example to my work, you know? Mm -hmm. I would be like, mm, what do I do if I almost don't have material to do it? Mm, in the other side, and I finish with that, sorry. If you think that you have like uh, more pictures that it will be more appealing, or you think you are missing or you were trying to set up a more serious tone, but you are saving some others that are way more attractive and you didn't want to put them because of this or this other, like maybe you should try with a different approach with the same material. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think I'm gonna play around with the images as well, and I'll take the advice you you gave to begin. Um, no, sorry. Um, there was another. Um, how you say that? Oh, Tina's portfolio, where I I tend to repeat images as well. So like you'll notice like the same like prototype with a table and so on. So I think I'm gonna take that advice as well and play around with the visuals just to make it a bit more have some variation between the. The images make it a bit more appealing. Probably, but for example, just to old stand something good. Like I, I think the thing is that I think the tone is good. Like, I mean, it's dedicated, serious. You know, like out of noise. You are taking me to these little paragraphs on the side. You know, it's a uh, consistent. Like the product is kind of. Uh, uh, quiet and not like calling lots of attention and the description is in the same way so the approach is good by itself you know inside the you, you needed it but to be more attractive yeah you will need to like be more playful I guess mm -hmm. I see with the cards that you have this is why <laughs> this war is super complicated <laughs> yeah no amazing no thank you thanks for the feedback um, definitely a lot of material to Play around with um, in the next iterations. <laughs> Thank you. I will be happy to see it on any other occasion. Amazing. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Jorge. Thank you. Well, we finished. Thank you very much, Jorge. Very good Thank advice. Uh, I know it's difficult to explain everything in 10 minutes, but uh, you did it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, we do these portfolio reviews uh, about once per month. So if you do some rework and you want someone else to, to check it, just uh, please come for the next portfolio review. If you are working on that too and you have a, a I don't know, prototype on Figma, it's okay too, we can, we can see it here. Um, and you can um, ask on Discord too. We have on Discord, we have one room that is, I think is portfolio review, the name I can't remember very well. Uh, but yeah, you can post your portfolio there and someone will help you to with, with some ideas too. Yeah, um, sorry to interrupt, I'll jump in. Um, so I'm the moderator for Discord. My name is Sita. And um, I do also do reviews on portfolios in Discord. So if you guys need like, you know, immediate review, like quickly, I can help and give you some feedback on Discord. And also there will be other members in Discord that can help you out too for reviews. And it's just called um, Portfolio Reviews on there. Yes, thank you very much. No problem. Um, thank you, Jorge, again. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And see you next Wednesday at the same time, in the same room. Thanks so much to everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you very much, Jorge. We are in touch. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a great night. Bye. Thank you.